Gon and Karapika reunite with Leo Rio and Killua at the Phase 2 site. Sadats leads what remains of the candidates to meet the second phase examiners, Menchi and Bohara. The examiners declare the next phase is to test their cooking skills, much to the candidates' disbelief. The test requires pork, so the candidates are sent to find pigs in the forest. However, the pigs living inside the forest are carnivorous and tear through the candidates. Thanks to Gon, they discover the pig's weakness and manage to each get one for their cooking. Upon tasting the candidates' food, wherein majority of the examinees simply roasted their pigs over a spit, Bohara gives a pass but Menchi fails all of them. Knowing the candidates will riot, Sadats informs Chairman Netero of the Hunter Selection Committee to make an appearance. Netero arrives to correct Menchi's habit of getting biased whenever it's related to cooking. Netero then allows Menchi to stay on as examiner, only if she participates in the event as well. Menchi gives the candidates a retest, boil eggs laid by spider eagles on empty split in half. The candidates ride on Netero's airship to the mountain, where they have to jump down into a potentially fatal ravine to get the eggs. Having seen and learned how Menchi gets her egg, Gon leads some of the other candidates into successfully getting their own. Some candidates are killed while rashly trying to get their eggs, while others refuse to take the leap. Out of the 50 candidates, who survived to reach Phase 2, 42 candidates now remain. Upon traveling to the Phase 3 site, the 42 remaining contestants travel on Chairman Netero's airship. All the candidates are told by Beans, Netero's secretary, to get some food and rest to prepare for the third phase the next morning. Tampa tries to sabotage the rookies again by trying to keep Karapika and Leo Rio awake for the whole night, but is exasperated to find that neither of them fall for his tricks. Gon and Killua explore the airship, and Killua tells Gon that he is actually from a family of assassins. He wished to go out on his own, not wanting his whole life planned out for him, which his family did not take lightly. Netero then arrives and tests both boys' instincts and asks how they felt about the difficulty of the exam. Netero invites both of them to participate in a game, which is simply taking a basketball from his hand. Gon and Killua find it too hard to pass up, but discovers that with Netero's skills, they are unable to grab the ball. Hours pass, and eventually, Killua gives up, realizing that they will never be able to take the ball from Netero, because Netero hasn't been employing any strength or energy from his right hand or left leg. Killua retires, but then takes his frustration out on two candidates who harass him by killing them. Gon continues the game until the wee hours of the morning, trying to grab the ball, and then headbutts Netero. The old man realizes that Gon will crack his skull if he continues with his headbutt, so he uses his right hand to push Gon away from him. Gon then tells Nederos then he has finally managed to get him to use his right hand once, which Gon counts as a great achievement. Gon passes out happily from exhaustion, and Netero calls the pilot of the airship to fly the ship a little slower so Gon could get more rest. The airship reaches the Phase 3 site, which is a tall, featureless pillar built on an equally high platform. It's called the Trick Tower. The candidates are told that to pass Phase 3, they have to climb down from the top to the base of the tower within 72 hours. An experienced rock climber candidate tries to climb down the side but is eaten by some flying monsters. Later, Karapika finds that more than half of the candidates have gone missing from the top platform. Gon and Killua then tell Karapika and Leo Rio that they have discovered hidden trapdoors that flip and go inside the tower. However, the catch is that there are many hidden doors and each one can be only used once by one person, which means they have to split up. Gon, Killua, Karapika, and Leo Rio try out different doors, saying goodbye, only to realize that they all end up in the same room. Gon's group is given special wristwatches, and Lippo, the Phase 3 examiner, explains that the wristwatches can be used to vote for which paths to take through the tower. They will need to cooperate in order to pass this phase. However, there are five watches and they cannot proceed without a fifth member. Tampa eventually falls through the trapdoor, joining in as the fifth member, and the exam proceeds. By following majority rule, the group eventually reaches an arena, where they have to face prisoners hired by Lippo to become combatants. Lippo explains that to pass, all they have to do is win three rounds. 
but the prisoners are given reduced sentences by one year for every hour they manage to keep the candidates here. Tompa volunteers to go first, pitting himself against a combatant named Bendot in a death match. Tompa immediately gives up, and Leo Rio accuses him of sabotaging candidates, which he admits to doing every year. Kurapika manages to stop Leo Rio, saying that this is part of their plan to make them fight each other and waste time. Gon decides to go for the second match, and is up against Sudokan, a jailed serial bomber. Gon wins his fight with Sudokan. Kurapika agrees to fight next. Kurapika's opponent, Magitani, exposes a spider tattoo a trademark of phantom troop members. Kurapika cannot control his rage, showing his clan's special ability, and defeats Magitani. Leo Rio agrees to fight next. Larook claims that Magitani is only unconscious, thus Kurapika's match has not been settled. Leo Rio, and even Killua, cannot persuade Kurapika to finish the fight for the latter refuses to fight a person who has lost the will to fight. Frustrated, Leo Rio decides to use the majority rule as a way out of the difficulty, but no one supports him. Elsewhere, Hisoka is met by Togari, a former examiner whom Hisoka attacked and is now wanting revenge. Togari attacks with four crescent blades, only to be finished with one sweeping attack. Hisoka then becomes the first applicant to pass this phase. Meanwhile, the team suspects Magitani's real condition. Larud challenges Leo Rio to have a betting game instead. Leo Rio agrees and bets 10 hours that Magitani is alive, which he wins. Next, he bets 20 hours on Magitani feigning unconsciousness. To confirm, he brings Magitani to the edge of the platform and threatens to drop him. Seeing that, Larud changes her bet to 40 hours on Magitani being conscious. When he is about to be dropped by Leo Rio, Magitani moves and admits defeat putting the score at 2 to 1 in favor of Leorio's team. However, they only have 20 hours left to wager.